Mm. Doc, is it the case that Islam feels threatened in the face of democracy? Is, is that the point? Is it, the, is it the case that Islam feels threatened in the face of democracy? Is it the case that Islam is doing what? Islam, I, Islam feels threatened in the, in the face of democracy. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If you understand Islam or if you read parts of the Quran and or what Islam stands for, Islam is equal to peace. So to use Islam as a tool doesn't mean Islam feels threatened. Uh, just like any other religion. But once you use religion or the tribe, things that touch on human values, the tribe, the clan, religion, they are very serious intangibles that touch the, the soul of man. And these are very useful tools for, for everything, to, for mobilization. You can see how our churches are growing these days and uh, when uh, somebody makes one miracle, people so are there. You know? And so it is that when you say, I'm fighting this war because Islam is being threatened, let's use your word. If I'm able to prove that the West is threatening us, Islam, like Boko Haram has done, Boko Haram says Western civilization is Haram. Everybody who believes in Islam will then fight for it, even though it may not be true. So it is not Islam which is threatened, but those fundamentalists are threatened. The fundamentals of their religion would be breaking somehow under the weight of modernization. And if they see that the conflict is, say, some Western countries, then those Western countries will be attacked, and together with their friends. If they can't attack them, then they will use all things. Because those working in the World Trade Center have, have nothing to do with America. They have nothing to do with religion. Because they will not have nothing to do with any religion or America or any other thing. But this is how terrorists work. That's why they are called terrorists. They use terrorist acts, you know, to make a statement. Well, Doc, let's move away from that. Uh, our time is really running. Let me pick your thoughts on what, as a continent, we can do uh, in readiness for, for this emerging uh, danger. Uh, terrorist groupings are building strong alliances across the world. What should Africa begin to do, especially when we've seen signs already? Al Shabaab clearly linked to uh, Al Qaeda. Uh, Boko Haram, we're not too sure uh, what their linkages are, but indeed the growing alliances of terrorist groups on the continent uh, is becoming alarming. What should Africa do? This is to be expected. Alliances are always part of international relations. Mm. Uh, create alliances, uh, not only terrorists, uh, even with Biden, uh, peace, uh, armed robbers. Narcotic traders, alliances in order to support each other are always a phenomenon that cannot be avoided. But let us look at the root causes of the spread of terrorism in Africa. You know, the, what happened in the Arab Spring was said that we were to expect this kind of thing to exacerbate. And there, are, there there's so much gun running as soon after the fall of Libya, for example, and the Arab countries are not themselves coming and ended. And there's so much trafficking of, uh, of, of guns. What do you expect? If the guns fall into the hands of the terrorists. Secondly, if the African continent has become um, heaven for those who can just rush in our borders, a poor uh, government in in Africa, instability is, is, is all over. And these are the areas where terrorists can easily, easily, easily uh, kind of operate. And that is why they are becoming more effective in Africa. Not so, just in effect that wherever they can operate from, they would. So, Osama bin Laden moves to Sudan, away from Saudi Arabia. He finds America to support him. They use him in Afghanistan. After Afghanistan, he decides to use Germany and the West. They he trade all the people So, wherever a terrorism will operate, they will operate. So, what Africa can do is to speed up integration, speed up development. I tell you, wherever there is more development, there is less terrorist activity. Really? If, if we are integrated in Africa, everywhere, if we are integrated in the northern part, southern part, everywhere, railway crossing left, right, and center, factories left, right, and center, who will be thinking about a certain religion and uh, who will be saying that somebody is being threatened? Mm. So the first thing is to speed up integration. We can speed up integration only through good governance. Most parts of Africa have bad governance, and that's why terrorist, terrorism is there. All right, Doc, we'll leave it here. Thank you very much, Dr. Vladimir Chidan. So we'll leave it here. Thank you You're so right. much for your time. So the point has been made that we need to check gun running, especially after 
uh, after the Libyan incident, okay, we also okay, need okay. to uh, work to strengthen and tighten our, our border security and speed up integration. But he made an interesting point, and I asked the question really, when he said that where there is development, there is less terrorist activities. But almighty America is a very developed country. But today, America is not sure what terrorist activities are even ongoing within itself. Do you agree with that point? Uh, terrorism is not an entirely an issue of bread and butter. Mm. Uh, the 19 people who carried out the September 11 attacks, 15 of them came from Saudi Arabia. Mm. Saudi Arabia is the richest Arab country uh, in the Middle East. Uh, two came from Lebanon, another came from the United Arab Emirates. It doesn't Emirates. mean those individuals themselves are rich. They were well to do. I've really? seen actionable intelligence that okay. those people were not ordinary people mm. some people had the intelligence to even go to uh, aviation schools in the west to learn how to pilot airplanes so to to reduce the cost of terrorism to poverty. basic things like poverty unemployment yeah. marginalization does not entirely bode well for a strong argument because but when some it is people, in relation with africa where people can easily be exploited because they are poor because they have no jobs it becomes much easier for terrorist groupings like al-qaeda uh, and all those groups to influence africans and use now them. the dozen people or so who went into the Westgate mall mm. and took it hostage uh, they went in there knowing so well that they wouldn't come out alive mm. so is it b b when you are hungry when you are unemployed do you go and then risk your life no they are they are pushed by a certain zealous uh, belief that when you carry out actions like this you are going to gain salvation you are going to be admitted to paradise okay. or heaven so let's not lose sight of the fact that there is a certain religious indoctrination that has gone down and the strongest argument the jihadists have is that the religion itself is under siege and the real enemy is the west and therefore these young people many suicide bombers are people in their 20s young people in the prime of their ages that sh should channel their exuberance uh, to national development and all that are wasted in in a way that is quite irrational to me and therefore we should look at the root causes of the problem uh, religiosity or zealotry uh, is one of the causes other than the other rudimentary uh, factors that have been mentioned your thoughts on that do we commander I think I agree with him on certain things, but I also disagree with Vladimir on certain issues. Mm. The terrorists have existed all alongside. You go to Spain, the Bax region, you go to the United Kingdom, the Irish situation between the Catholics and the uh, Protestants, then you go to Southern America. Many countries have been through this localized terrorist actions, but they are all geared towards particular issues. They have been down trodden, poverty, frustration, they, they get up and they are named. We were shot in Africa, let's say in Ghana, during our struggle for independence that we were not labeled as terrorists. But Angola and Mozambique, they did. So they are all linked up to an issue. And we're saying that there's importation of that ideology into Africa. I mean, if you take Boko Haram or even Al Shabaab, they had existed, as I said earlier, as a fringe of a political party. How did they get in touch with Al Qaeda or Taliban or whatever it is? Because the West have portrayed or they didn't believe that their religion was under siege. And they had to liberate themselves. And the only way to do it is, is to go the way they are going. So I believe that one can say that it because of religion or any other sphere, but they are imported into this country, into uh, this sorry, into, into this continent. Yeah. And we have to find a way, either say that and Georgia or talk. I mean, Nigeria has gone a long way for all the military power. Boko Haram filters, it regroups, it comes back, it hits them again. There must be a way to try and get them and see how we can solve it. Well, I, I want to take my break. When I come back, I will, I will ask a few issues on that one, follow up. As is democracy are the principles democracy in any way at variance with the principles of Islam and for that reason somebody should feel threatened that his religion is under siege because there is a certain civilization that seems to be spreading across Africa when we're back I'll pick our thoughts on that mm -hmm. matter this is state of the nation we'll take a break we'll soon be back when we're back we'll read some of your uh, messages as well